gotta catch my breath. Nice meeting you guys. Right, yeah, take care. Oh, I love these seats, bro. <laughs> Some things about these cars is that it's pretty easy to go fast, but it's hard to slow down. This car slows down very, very fast. <laughs> Damn. It's crazy like how loud it is because this has uh, the long two Heathers. Yeah, it sounds way different than any other M3. Yeah, we had that acrophobic on it with the Heathers and like literally the diff was louder than the exhaust. We I gotta catch my breath. 
my god. It was peaceful, right? That was very peaceful. It was mother and trees. Very, I think very, very peaceful is a great way to put it. Times a million. <laughs> Dude, so I gotta say, that was insane. So this all happened because of a Facebook group that yep. we belong to, and yep. I can't say thank you enough for doing this. Oh, no, thank you for having us, yeah, man. Of course. I'm Alex, and this is actually my girlfriend's car that she uses for the track. And, you know, it's very, I like to say, purpose-built, as you've seen. You know, everything on here is meant for a reason. It's meant to be faster than the GT3, basically, which it may or may not be with the right driver. So the car itself is a 2008. It's Stargang torn apart with around 28,000 miles on it. So it was, you know, a fully loaded PCT car. I actually got it from my buddy who, again, you know, wanted to make it faster than his GT3 and so that was the initial yeah. goal. This car you bought from a friend who had an idea to make the car faster on the track than, it, exactly. than a Porsche. Yeah. So you bought the car almost halfway built, it sounds like? Uh, no, it was mostly built, and okay. we've been tweaking it because it was straight for the track. It got okay. trailer to the track, it went to the track, and never saw the streets. Yeah. And then we kind of made it an in-between car, more like a GTS car like that's meant for the track, yeah. that you can go to dinner with and have a lot of fun with taking a car that was made for the track and then bringing it on the street. Yeah. How did it feel when you first drove the car on the street? Because this thing is set up just to rip the track apart. Right, well, we're only used to like our pants in the car on the track, so <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was very different. You know, you get up the track and the car smoking, the rollers are on fire and it's crazy. <laughs> so it was very different. It was, just, I didn't think it was going to be as comfortable as a street car as it really is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's never like, I can't take it here or there. You know, it's my track car. It's perfect. Go out to dinner. And as far as the suspension setup, what suspension do you have on here? So it has JRZ three ways. Got the first two canisters right here. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so it's a course. full JRZ setup. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh. That's pretty serious then. Yeah. Dang. How does this compare to anything else on the market? Cause this is very serious. Setup. Unreal. This is the first of the JRZs we've both had in the family on cars and uh, it's it's a whole different animal. Yeah. You have the canisters back there to set up. Okay. So you can get them from the breathe. And you know, we've had Olins, KWs, Club Sports, you know, Club Sports are probably by far the best street ones. Olins are amazing and you know being an Olin's dealer too, we've sold plenty, but unreal. Yeah. Like it just, they, these are just perfect. I've like, been in plenty of M3s and you can feel the difference in this car big time. Yeah. This, I mean, it's unbelievable. This takes like the floatiness of the M3 and this is flat. Do you have sway bars on this car? It does. Okay. It has a front ground control sway bar, which is actually like super thick. It's an exact copy of BMW's Motorsport lip. So it only makes sense. And this actually has the functional brake ducts that do go to the brakes which was an important reason to have it as well. How about the wheel setup? What do you have as far as wheels? So we have the FIRs on right now. They only come in M4 fitment, unfortunately, but we have a 10 mil spacer in the back to make them fit perfectly. We have Apex with slicks on them too for the track, but we had this thing in the garage and like I was playing <laughs> them in my car and I'm like, you know what? I'm like, they're gonna be perfect on this. Yeah. I'm like, that's it. Like we're throwing them on. Typically I'll see a lot of people that run Michelins or yeah. triple eights. Yeah. With this setup, this is one of the first cars I've seen run this setup. What do you think of these tires? I actually love them. You know, I don't know much about them. I'm a, I run Michelins. I've had the Toyos. Toyos are great tires too, but these do everything perfectly, even in the cold and wet. You know, even if you take them to the track, they're going to be fine. So as far as the interior, what do you have set up? So those are the Recaro SPG XLs. They're awesome. Yeah. Very comfortable. Obviously they hold yeah. you very tight. Yeah. we got the Scroth harnesses also. It's a GTS cage. I, I believe it's an actual GTS cage as well. The wing is an RKP wing. So the car is actually space gray with just a matte clear bra. It's oh, not, okay. it's not actually frozen gray. How long have you owned this car for? We've had the car probably a year and a half now. Yeah. yeah. So we've had it for a little while. And you know. said that you had a couple supercharged E90Xs before. Yeah. And this car that we completely forgot to talk about has long tube headers. <laughs> this does, yeah. It sounds insane. So on top of the long tube headers from uh, American Racing, it actually has dine-in throttle bodies, poured and polished heads. Everything from dine-in that you can get for the engine, this car has. Again, the headers are American Racing with a custom Gintani rear section. We actually had it on her old car, and this was too quiet with that Krapovic, so we pulled it off. And, and put this one on. <laughs> got a little surprised when we started up the first time. I mean, this thing sounds violent. It, it is violent. How about transmission? Anything done to it? Transmission just has a GTS tune. Okay. Um, other than that, you know, it hasn't been built. The clutches are all stocked. This is new to me because you said that the car is. Uh, upgraded differential correct yeah so i have to check which gearing it is i think it's like the 362s but it has their entire diff package the clutch packs the gearing it essentially like manipulates torque so it could be like 20 percent more torque or 30 percent and it just it's way harder you know where these cars don't shine is their torque they have a lack of it so that diff picks up for it like uh i had a six speed also with 410 gears and it manipulates it by like 30 percent so it revs higher but yeah. it just it just takes off so much harder you know you lose a little up top but i mean how often are you driving 200 miles an hour for the round the turn and it's just grabbing it's you know it's not letting loose it's just sticking to the roads if you don't mind me asking how much do you think is invested 
invested in this car? With the car itself, I believe there was about 120 to 150 invested. You know, just building it, all the labor, the parts themselves, you know, nothing nothing was cut short. This car was made to be perfect and you know, drive perfectly, and I think that's what it does. Now, as far as when you take it to the track, how often do you track these cars? Usually we try to go four or five times a year. Okay. This year we haven't gone too much, just, you know, traveling and work schedule. The year that before that, though, we were there like twice a month. Oh, you have to, man. Nuts, yeah. <laughs> what rear diffuser is this? So this is the Varus upper. It's an actual authentic Varus. So the exhaust is actually pretty cool. It was on his twin turbo E90 build. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've ever seen it. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it yeah. before. So that was on there. And when he started taking the car apart to sell it stock, he grabbed it from him. So, That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty rad. And if you had to say one thing about this car that you love the most, what would you say? Yeah, that's hard. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a package, man. The car is just, in my opinion, perfect for what it's made for. I mean, the diff probably like makes this car go though. That's surprising because yeah. most people will talk about adding more power or suspension, yeah. but the differential makes that big of a difference. The, the diff being built correctly helps put all that power down. Again, I'm all about superchargers. I've had three supercharged E90s. They're all awesome, but this diff on naturally aspirated, even if I was doing another supercharged build, a built diff is a must. You know, you, you can't put that power down without it. Sure. It's, it just doesn't make sense. And these cars are just spinning tires and going everywhere. So this is her car. This is your car. Yes. Let's talk about this thing, <laughs> please. <laughs> I don't know if you ever saw it online as a Signal Green M4, Kermit. Yes, I have. Yeah. I've so seen that. That was my old M4 and I built that kind of be as best of a track car, street car as possible. When they released the GTS, I was like, it's the hideous thing I've ever seen. Really? Yeah, I was like, I'm like, my car's better. I'm like, no way, but we all say that. But then like, I remember my old car with all the OEM GTS parts and everything. I'm like, I'm like, I gotta have it. I saw it, it started to grow on me. The hood, I think is probably my favorite part about the car. It's sure. just so aggressive. And I was like, you know, there's gonna be a track car and BMW is gonna make it. I'm like, this is gonna be it. So if it's something that comes from the factory that's made for the track, you're into it. It's. Yeah. Yeah, I get yeah. that. Because it's very rare that happens with BMW. The last one that we got was a lightweight. So as far as this car, just in a quick nutshell, what do you have done to it that's aftermarket? Yeah. So this really doesn't have too much, to be honest. It has the HRE wheels. It has an Eventury intake, which is pretty badass. It's got some Vorsteiner Aero side skirts and diffuser. It's got the RKP wing risers from IND, just to give it like the, a little more of a racy look. Another part, my favorite mod, I think, is the European bucket seats that come and the GTS that we never got. So I've had this car since new. I got it right around when they came out, probably 2017. I like to think it's the highest mileage GTS. I have like 18,000 miles on no it. No way. Yeah. So you drive this thing a lot? I drive it, yeah. Hell yeah. And then if you had to pick one thing about this car that you like, what is it? The interior, I love it. The car drives great. Everything's you know great on it. Uh -huh. but I love the cockpit on this car. I did dry carbon on like a everything that I could. I just like that. It yeah. looks great. I mean, having these two cars is probably so much fun because you have so much diversity. Yeah. yeah. And each car, they're BMWs, but at the end of the day, they drive differently, I yeah. assume. They're, they're very different. You know, this feels very raw, where this is, even with the track suspension, very comfortable and fast. Yeah. So it's, you know, getting into them, like, you know where they both come from. You know, it's like a motorsport thing. The turbo is just making so fast. Just go effortlessly. I can't say thank you enough for doing this, man. I appreciate no, it. No, thank you for having me. on video but this car with long tube headers is a whole different animal I've never heard an NA V8 sound like this before uh, the only way to describe it is violent it sounds much deeper and way more intense and this is kind of the direction I want to take my E92 is the seats the cage that suspension setup is just too legit but this uh, 
yeah, this is like the dream setup. Eventually, one day, my car will look like this. Eventually. First time in any kind of M4. Yeah? You got plenty of room to go back if you want. Oh, no, I'm good. Thank you. These seats are really nice, man. Thank you. Jeez. They're really just pole positions. Yeah. But like, you know, a little fancier done. Now, this is the car that wants to kill me all the time. <laughs> this is the, the crazier one. Yeah, this is a whole different feeling of a car. Yeah. Completely different. Like, for a turbo car, it feels very raw. <laughs> Such a good job on the two. It feels natural and last great. Yeah. You really feel the turbos like a lot. Yeah. This car is super refined. Person. Thank you so much. Thank you man. for coming up. Of course. Alright, so that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much to those guys. That was awesome, Alex. Thank you for the morning. I had such a fun time. Uh, the E92 is insane. I'm for sure getting headers on my car. But if you guys can, if you've appreciated these videos in any kind of way, if you've enjoyed these videos, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel because it helps me, it helps me grow on my channel, and it helps to support make more of these. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>